How's it going? Glenn Fricker here on location at Sweetwater Sound. And I got a question for all of you guys. Are you looking for a nice, subtle edge of breakup kind of tone? If you're looking for the pedal to deliver that where you can get the subtle nuances out of your playing and impress all your cork sniffing blues playing friends, then this is not that pedal! <laughs> Not even close. Yes. So we got Mr. Nick Bocott here um, with me today. Nick, thanks so much for being on the My show pleasure. here. Um, I, I got to admit, I'm fanboying just a little bit. I kind of grew up listening to a lot of Grim Reaper. Uh, no, well, I, I apologize. I, for I, that, I, I'm, I'm, no, I'm lying. Actually, all my friends owned all the Grim Reaper records, and they just forced me to listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> bullying, a form of bu yes, Sonic exactly. bullying. Yes. Uh, just one question I think everybody wants to know is, do you still have those ripped up acid wash jeans? Yeah. Okay, great. Somewhere. Somewhere. Okay, fabulous. I think they're cleaning a car somewhere, but they're... <laughs> amazing, <laughs> <Somewhere>. amazing. <laughs> so, all right. So, the uh, today we're obviously here with the Rev stuff, and we're checking out my brand new pedal. And this is called the Northern Mauler, and this is something I've been working with uh, Rev for the last year and a half or so, just with some back and forth and whatnot. I came to Dan from Rev, and I said, hey, look, I really love the G series of amps you know the uh, the generator is just incredible it has been i've been working with these guys since 2015 and i love the purple channel i love the red channel well can we do something kind of in between that and give us you know maybe a bit of a blend of both and they're like sure no problem and i'm like but can we also take maybe some of the old swedish chainsaw hm2 sound and can we put that in a pedal as well and they're like hmm let's see okay and i said and we need them to run in parallel Okay, now now it's getting interesting. They're like, we'll, we'll see what we can do. And uh, we did a lot of back and forth and a lot of Dan sending me stuff. And Dan's a brilliant designer, Dan Trudeau. He's, he's absolutely great at what he does. And he sent me a pedal and I'm like, nope, that's not it. And then send it back and then send me another one. Nope, that's not it. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And it was back and forth like that for quite a while until we finally got something we were happy with. And you know, I signed off and I said, this is gonna be great, this is awesome. And then Dan comes back at me a few weeks later and says, hey, uh, we've got an even better version, check this out. You know, and it's like, wow, you absolutely nailed it. You knocked it out of the park. And that's the mauler. So I figured I'd take you guys through it. So uh, it, it's really easy to make sense of this. Okay, there's only, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got eight knobs. Okay, that's probably seven knobs too many for your bass player, but still most of you guitar <laughs> player guys are probably gonna be able to figure this out. Basically this side over here is the rev distortion and then this side over here is the HM2. It's pretty simple stuff. So we're gonna start over on the HM2 and I'm gonna take you guys through it. And uh, Nick's gonna play for us because this is freaking cool. So we got bite, growl, and volume. So bite and growl, it's just basically two main controls and a volume for the HM2 side. <laughs> Definitely got that kind of snarl, but it's got insane bottom end too. But this is an HM2, so the only way you can do it is play it loud. Yep, everything full up. That's gnarly. That, that takes me to Sweden. Right yeah, there. it really does. It's got that kind of thing. Now, this thing in the studio, you know, I'm always combining HM2s into what I'm what I'm recording. I'm usually doing a lot of quad tracking, two tracks of like a really nice tube amp, and then two two tracks of a pedal or something like that, like an HM2 or, or a variant of some sort. Uh, now we can kind of do the same thing in a pedal. So if you're a live player, you can kind of get that blended effect just in the pedal, or you can use this pedal in the studio as well because I want it to be you know really versatile and not just you know, just the one trick pony one up. So you can put this in front of a tube amp, you can put it into your effects loop and you just use the power section. You can use this as um, right in front of say a solid state power section as well, or you can plug it directly into your interface and just run in impulse responses off it and get, get some cool results. So that's the HM2 side and that's pretty pretty insane. That's pretty out of control. Let's uh, let's move the blend knob full over to the uh, to the modern distortion end and uh, let, me, let me bring it in here. Um, We've got treble, mid, and bass. This one's got a mid control, and I was yelling at Dan for quite a while to give me a mid control on this side because it wasn't quite doing what I wanted it to do. So he was nice enough to give me that. And then we've got the giver control, which is Canadian for distortion. Lots of mids here, watch this. And uh, yeah, just play with the trouble. You can see it kind of gets to a certain point and then it kind of like flattens upon itself and gets really nasty in a cool way. 
Yeah, that's that's really cool. It's like yeah, you can see we give hit the giver knob and it just fills it out so it's nicely. Nice. It works. It's got a lot of bottom end too. The cool thing is I noticed about this pedal though is that the treble and the mid range kind of work almost like a two amp does with a with the treble control and the presence control. Gotcha. They kind of play off each other. Right, right, right. You know, so you can get some cool cool effects going on just by playing with these two guys. But this pedal gets really interesting when you start bringing the blend in. <laughs> Makes you make the face. Yeah, <laughs> that's that to me is the be all end of the pedal or okay. an amp. It's do you make the face when you just chug one you, chord? Yeah, it's just like oh yeah, and that's it's like, so yes, <laughs> yes, and this has it. And I love the blend by the way, because, mm. and the name is very apt as we mm. discussed before. If you right. look at, I just came back from Germany. Mauler with an umlaut over the a, spelt exactly like that. Is German slang for angry complainer. <laughs> this is right the truth. there. Right there. I have no it's idea perfect. what you're talking about. Yeah. No, it's brilliant though. You couldn't have come up with a better name ever. <laughs> and it does maul the heck out of you. Not, like you said, you know, mm. at the risk of repeating what you've said, the fact you're blending new school with that great Swedish chainsaw, mm. which was definitely, you know, at the gates. I'm a huge at the gates fan. Entombed. Uh, um, and uh, even uh, to a certain extent. In um, flames. In flames, degree. yeah, that, the Clayman sound. A lot of that was, you know, some HM2 in there, that kind of thing. And yeah, it's just, I love that kind of grinding chaos, so to speak. Yeah. But this this will let you do that full on, but this, you know, you can kind of modern it up a little bit too and get something yeah, uh, the kind of your own thing. So the best of both worlds, so mm -hmm. like, Sweden, Sweden meets America. Yeah, or Canada so, in this case. But yeah, this is a. I enjoy this pedal, and the fact it's parallel that mm. might sound like a small thing, but it's huge because you don't want the one smashing into the other. You right. want them separate. So, like you said, in the studio, the perfect world. I learned it early on from people like Jimmy Page, and then listening to bands like Judas Priest. You layer different sounds together, and it becomes larger than life. One other really cool thing about this pedal, I don't know if you noticed this, but the uh, this uses LEDs for the, the actual distortion, and they're clipping clipping diodes. So the harder you play, the more these two, uh, the, the eyes here are actually going to light up. Ah, you know, I, know I was wondering why it was flashing, so let's yeah, see if I can make them extremely angry. <laughs> I thought Enough that, said. I thought that was a really nice touch. So, you know, I mean, obviously we're lit up really hard here, but if you're on stage or whatnot, you know, you want to see your pedals working, I mean, like, you're going to get some instant visual feedback right there. So, I really love the G3. I really love the G4. I know they're super popular pedals. And this, the modern section of this is kind of like the G3 and a half, we kind of nicknamed it as. Yeah. And uh, so that's the. G you know, the classic rev sound mixed with a little bit of that Swedish insanity. And I'm really liking the result we're getting. But it's also going to be built to that kind of quality standard. They're made in Canada and uh, they back it up with the rev warranty. So these are really solid pedals. You don't have to worry about it falling to pieces on it six weeks down the road, that kind of thing. This thing's built to last with quality parts. So if you're curious about how much it costs, where you can get it, all that kind of stuff, follow the link in the description below or call your Sweetwater sales engineer. Yeah, and I have to say, to chip in here, I give this two enthusiastic thumbs up. In fact, I should really say two enthusiastic horns up because this is one heck of a fine metal pedal. Sweden meets modern American metal. None more better. Nice. Well done, sir. Well Thank done. you very much, Nick. My pleasure. All right. Don't forget, call your Sweetwater sales engineer or Nick's going to find you. And I know where you live. We have an app for that. Yeah.